We know what you're thinking. You just clicked on this super long video and you're wondering why on earth you're here. Well, this is a compilation vlogumentary of our recent month long trip through Northern India. All of our videos and experiences in one place. We'll be starting off in Delhi where we tour some incredible sights, try some strange and wonderful foods and celebrate Independence Day all while staying at our friend's family home. We then hop on a train to Agra to see the Taj of course and the underrated Agra Fort and then onto one of our favorite cities in India, Jaipur where we get a taste of Indian luxury, stay at the best Indian homestay and tour the pink city. From there, we're heading way up north into the Himalayas for some epic road trip adventures and absolutely mind-blowing landscapes. Sit back, grab some coffee and let's get into it. First impressions of the airport, great. The process was all very straightforward. We spent about an hour getting through immigration and security. The immigration officers were even friendly, which if you're a traveler, you know that's not normal. We needed to show a printed version of the following, our visas and a small declaration form we just got before immigration. No proof of accommodation or outward flight was needed, but we did book a flight just in case. After hearing all these horror stories of people losing their luggage, we've got ours. And we actually purchased Apple AirTags to make sure that we knew where on earth they were in case they got lost. Just like everyone else in Europe's bags got lost. So yeah, here they are. Yay! Our social media friend Varun came to fetch us at the airport. Thank you man, nice to meet you bro. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. We'll be staying with him and his family for the first few days and then we'll later be traveling to the north of India with them. We all caught an Uber ride from the airport. Uber and Ola are the two main apps here. We recommend you use them because some drivers actually can't speak English. Needless to say, we experienced the most chaotic driving of our lives. <laughs> the house we're staying in. Nice local home. Right in the central heart of Ghaziabad. Hello! How are you? Welcome! Oh, thank you! It's good to be here. So this is our little room we'll be staying in for the next three nights or so. We're staying at our friend Varun's house who we also met on Instagram about, I don't know, three years ago or something. And he offered to host us here at his home in India with his parents and it's just so kind of him. He's also a content creator and does a bit of traveling with his wife. So go and check out their page. I'll link it in the description. Mosquito spray. Mm, there's definitely a lot of mosquitoes in the room today. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently they are not the ones that carry dengue fever and all the bad stuff. How do you know? No, there was a... I was yeah. reading an article. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading an article yesterday that said there's been a big increase in mosquitoes but they haven't found any of the bad stuff in them so we should be good. I take my precautions, I brought my deeds with me. Yeah. Insect repellent, we brought this and, and that one is, gave us this. And it's an eco-friendly one. Both of these are eco-friendly. Very good. Oh that's another thing to mention is like a lot of the families here in India are very eco-conscious and a lot of them are vegetarian as well because of the Hindu lifestyle and all of that. So that's awesome. I really appreciate that. We like that stuff. I think we're probably going to eat 100% vegetarian for our whole time here. Maybe the odd butter chicken or chicken biryani here and there but I think most of it's just going to be veg. <laughs> Chapati? Chapati? Roti. Roti. In, yeah, roti. Yeah, roti. Mm. In English, chapati. Yeah, okay. Mm. Mm. So good, chap. This is homemade pickle. Mango pickle. It's so yummy. Wow. And this is also potato, onion, peppers. Actually, this is really yummy too. And this is curd with every meal we yeah. have it. It's really good for your tummy. Mm. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. 
Yesterday we were talking about this dessert. It's the most like popular dessert in India and I even googled it and then today mom made it. It's gulab jamu with their little balls of stuff. <laughs> That's right. Syrup? Mm-hmm. It looks yummy. Wow. Tastes like cook sister. Really? Mm-hmm. Just a quick intermission to tell you about our Indian resource pack that includes over 20 accommodations, our Google Maps link to all the sites, restaurants and places we visited in India, links to book visas, trains, planes and experiences. So if you're planning a trip to India, click the first link in the description. So first impressions of India is so many animals. One of the things that we first saw was that there's cows on the side of the highway, main main highway, just cows there. There are stray dogs everywhere. They were even in the airport, uh, all over the airport, just roaming around. And there were apparently monkeys on top of our house last night. And another thing, lots of mosquitoes in our room. <laughs> Lots of them. I guess it's because of the heat and humidity though. Okay, so let's talk about the weather here. We're here in August. It's the monsoon season, but it's towards the end and it's going into winter. It's hot and humid. Like when we walked out of the airport, it was quite hot. It's hot. It's hot in India. Uh, and humid at first, but 24 hours later, we like acclimatized and it's really not as humid as what people made it out to be. It's definitely more humid in Doha and KL. I mean, we had to get out the plane for two seconds in Doha. I thought I was gonna die. Really not bad. The skies are actually blue and it's quite comfortable to be honest. And then in the evenings, it actually cools down quite a lot and it's really not that bad and it's quite comfortable. We didn't even sleep with the aircon on the whole night last night. Isn't it just such a clean, cute suburb, hey? Really reminds me of Govap in Vietnam, actually. Building some really nice houses around here. Yes, yes. yes, yes. <laughs> Kiddos are taking us to the bank. So, what did you get? How much and how much? I got 2000 rupiah. Hmm? How much is it worth? Uh, this is like, I think, 400 rand. Which is how many dollars? This is like 30 dollars. Okay. It's not a lot. That's not um, a lot. But yeah, 2000. And I'm happy to see Mahatma Gandhi on this, who, oh, yeah. if you don't know, had an interesting history in South Africa as well. He has a house there, which we actually went to visit a few years ago. 40. 40. 40. Thank you. 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 Thank RDC le jao na okay paise batao paise puch rahe paise okay bye bye take take kaza On the Uber app, there's like six different transport options and a tuk-tuk is one of them. It's so cool, there's so many options. Oh my god, are we going to die? Hey, hey, hey. Wow. All right, we made it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Here we are at Hipster Coffee. Thank you. Your coffee is ready, man. 
Thank you. So we got a coffee, frappuccino, and today we got an Americano, and both of those were 168 rupiah, which is like 35 rand, which is like two dollars for two drinks. Really good. Have a nice day, bye bye. And we're back at the park, and the boys are playing cricket. And you bet your ass I'm gonna join them if they'll take me. Yay! Ready, steady. Wow, beautiful ball, eh? Nice <laughs> catch. <laughs> I've literally been dreaming about playing cricket in India since forever and now I'm right here, I can't believe it. This is Living cool. so close to a park and playing with the locals here has just been amazing. <laughs> wow, alright, so we are currently walking to a local market here. We're gonna buy some vegetables for dinner. We are walking with auntie. She's gonna make us dinner tonight, so we just come to go get some supplies. Overall, first impressions, it's been amazing. The people have been so friendly. We basically just did a meet and greet in the park today. There he was the number one celebrity. Wow, this is amazing. Oh, this is so cool. Popcorn, pasta, like this kind of shopping. Yeah. Everything you need for dinner just in one street. So easy. Vegetable, pasta. You name it. Ah, so cool. Delhi, what a city. Located in the north of India with a population of 32 million, this city is the start of what is known as India's famous Golden Triangle. Join us in today's vlog, we are going to be exploring as much of old and new Delhi as possible. It's truly a special time to be in Delhi as India is celebrating its 75th year of independence. Welcome to the biggest spice market in the whole of Asia. This is Chandri Chow, I think that's how you say it. It actually smells beautiful with all the spices and there's also some people making beautiful flower decorations on the ground there. It's the day before Independence Day so it's a lot more busy and chaotic because everyone's getting prepared for the holiday tomorrow. But yeah, this is true India, I love it. You feel pumped, you feel alive, invigorated. <laughs> <laughs> All love. There's literally feces. <laughs> like everywhere. This is literally right in the heart of Old Delhi. On the rooftops here, you can see for miles and miles and miles and miles of just rooftops, houses, families doing their things, people cooking parathas. It's amazing. It's just, and you can just smell that spice. When we were walking up the stairs, it was 
just hitting you in the nose that you couldn't breathe, you were just coughing, but wow, what an experience to be up here. Old Delhi is the original neighborhood of Delhi that dates back to the 1600s. We've come to visit Chandni Chow where most tourists end up. It's a small market area in Old Delhi and in all honesty it's very run down, dirty and chaotic. To be honest the smells are a bit too hectic for me. Okay, we just made a little stop here to this market. This is Faluda. We're getting that. And then what's the other one thing? Kofi. Ice cream. We need it. Oh my gosh, it's hot. Sorry. Is it too sweet? It's amazing. It's got a weird texture, like grainy. It's grainy? It's straight. It's should be creamy. This is This Yanis. Yanis. Very good, thank you. Okay, so we've just come to this little restaurant now. We're sitting inside. Honestly, it is so hot. I don't think I've been this hot in a long time. Look at red shirt. Oh my god. Kule? Kulfi. Kulfi? This is We just saw a public urinal with no doors. It was right in the middle of the street and I was wondering what I was actually smelling. It was a urinal. Men were just peeing there. On the plus side though, the sun has gone away and it's a little more cool. Much better. There's a nice breeze. This is great. Now we just came down this alley and look at these houses. They are 400 years old and they are so beautiful. Look at the doors, look at the patterns. Oh my gosh, there's a beautiful one in front of us. Look at this. Oh, it's so pretty guys. <laughs> because it was a jungle before for him. This man then offered for us to have a tour of his centuries old family home, but it ended up being a short walk to his jewelry store instead. There was no tour. Finished our tour and it's time to grab a quick meal. We're having some Raj Katoji, I think. Clary's about to have her first bite. What is this? Let her try. Whoa. <laughs> okay, look, chap inside. Very beautiful. That's, My goodness. That's made out of lentils, I think, the one that green thing. Okay. Is it spicy? I was genuinely thinking that it was going to be a dessert, but it tastes like a curry, okay. like a spicy yogurty thing. <laughs> so my taste buds were like, like good what the hell are you doing to me? Just look at this, all the way down there, all the way down there. There's so many goodies and then there's savory stuff there. Upstairs is all food buffet and it's right in the old town main street on the right as you walk in. We'll put the sign up on the screen now so you know where to come. Mm. Mm. Very yummy. You can never go wrong with a good samosa, eh? Curry, curry and rice. Isn't it basically a rice bowl? No, it tastes like a vegetarian butter chicken. Yes, <laughs> you, do you want some? No. no. <laughs> There he's trying some rascula. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stand by, take a while. It's literally a sponge, you just squeeze all the sugar water out. <laughs> After trying this cute little squishy snack, Red actually said that it tasted like paper and sugar water, and I couldn't actually believe how accurate he was. For a full table of food for four people, it was only $13, 
even in a touristy restaurant. India is turning out to be one of the cheapest countries we've visited. We tried to visit the Red Fort and Humayun's tomb, but because it's the day before Independence Day, the fort was closed, and because of monsoon season, we got rained out at the tomb. So where did we end up instead? Well, at the mall. And quite frankly, the mall was super impressive. It had so many brands that we don't even get back in South Africa. We grabbed a cuppa at Starbucks and then headed to the next monument. And now we are at this monument called Kutub Minar, and it is so, so beautiful. In the past, you used to be able to walk up it, but now you don't. But these grounds and everything are so stunning. There's birds flying around, parakeets, and entrance is free to all monuments today. Nice! Super, super impressive structure. It was established in like 1200 AD after the Muslims and the Mongols basically defeated the Hindu ruler. They erected this tower to say basically, yeah, this is our land now. Super, super impressive how it's been built over like centuries to get to where it is now. In fact, the top of it fell down during a lightning strike and uh, they had to rebuild it. That's why the top is a different color of marble. We were told numerous times to avoid Delhi and not come here at all. We really can't understand why though. Delhi has a rich history, incredible architecture, and it makes for the perfect start to an Indian itinerary. In fact, some parts of Delhi were very fancy and super clean. There were even massive parliamentary buildings, apartment blocks, and stunning gardens. There's a reason why it's the starting point of the Golden Triangle, and we have absolutely no regrets visiting the city. In fact, we stayed for a few more days to celebrate Independence Day. It's been 75 years since India gained its independence and we are so happy to be here during this time. So join us in today's video as we take you to Delhi's most important monuments that are awesomely lit up in the colours of the Indian flag. Next up is Humayun's tomb. It was built in the 1560s by his grieving widow Hamida Banu Begum. Persian and Indian craftsmen worked together to build the garden tomb far grander than any tomb built before in the Islamic world. It stands on a platform of 1200 meters squared and reaches a height of 47 meters. This tomb is the earliest example of Persian influence in Indian architecture and actually became an inspiration for the Taj Mahal a few decades later. One of the perks of coming to India during this festive period during like Independence Day and all the holidays that follow on from now for the next six months is that during a festival the monument entrance fee is free even for tourists so we don't even have to pay the entrance fee. Usually it's around 600 to 700 rupees to get in for a foreigner so that's quite a saving. Thank you India. <laughs> Up is Savdarjung tomb complex. This looks a lot older because it's actually not maintained the way the previous monument is, but it's beautiful nonetheless. This bit behind me reminds me of a peacock, and the peacock is actually India's national bird. <laughs> Fact of the day. <laughs> we did that whole vlog sequence thinking that was the tomb. We were even quite impressed until Varun told us to go through and take the shot. We only realized then that we were fools and we weren't even in the right place. This is the actual tomb and it's so much more beautiful. It was built in 1754 in the late Mughal Empire style for Nawab Sabdarjan. He was made Prime Minister of the Mughal Empire in 1748 and according to Wikipedia he was a cruel controlling man and so he was later driven out of Delhi in 1753. He died soon thereafter in 1754 and his son pleaded with the empire to erect this monument in memory of his father. It is crazy out there today. Independence Day 1947 was the year. We just drove past India Gate. 
but we could not actually film it properly because it's just nowhere to park and there are policemen everywhere. So we just had to quickly film it out the window. The India Gate, formerly known as the All India War Memorial, was opened in 1931. It stands as a memorial to 84,000 soldiers of the British Indian Army who died between 1914 and 1921 in the First World War and the Third Anglo-Afghan War. 13,300 servicemen's names, including some soldiers and officers from the United Kingdom, are inscribed on the gate. And it is often compared to the Arc de Triomphe in Paris and the Gateway of India in Mumbai. It's time to leave Delhi and head to the second part of the Golden Triangle and home to the famous Taj Mahal, Agra. But first, how do we get there? Well, there's a few ways you can go to Agra. First of all, you can take a train. We opted to take a train because it's the most authentic way of getting to Agra. Second, you can take a cab. <laughs> and third, you can take a bus. So this is our first time taking a train in India. We'll take you through the experience and share any tips that we might have. Okay, we have a one and a half hour train ride. Maximum two hours, but we're on a a sleeping train with beds <laughs> so a little bit confusing we thought we'd have uh, some seats with a little table to do some work on but it's fine it will be comfortable and at least it's air conditioned is from yesterday from Independence Day okay so here's a tour of the train and these are our well no this is our seat and this is our seat this one was a bed but it turned into two seats we lifted those up and then this is a bed up here <laughs> I've never climbed onto a train bed before mm -hmm. okay. we're up welcome to my crib <laughs> okay so there's two Actually really nice pillows. One, two. Then there's these brown bags. Let's see what they are. Shall we? Oh, fresh linen. Oh, and a towel. Oh my goodness, it's a little hand towel. And yeah, just sheets. Beautiful white linen sheets. That's just amazing. We've heard that this has recently only just come back since COVID. Obviously it wasn't sanitary to do this um, before. There's one, two, and then there's two nice big brown blankies. And here's a place for your water. Here's a little light. On, off. The air conditioning is right over here. I think you can even turn it off. Maybe not. And where's the power supply? Oh, here. I mean, isn't that just so lacquer? And then look at my view. Those people even have little hangers for their jackets and stuff, and then a mirror. I guess to do makeup. Vikas is going to Mumbai and he's got a 16 hour ride ahead of him so that's why there's blankets and linen and everything a towel so you can obviously take a shower because some of the people on this train are going a very long distance fortunately we're just doing two hours today okay since the train leaves in about 15 minutes I'm gonna quickly go to this little stall here and see what snacks we can get not sure if they're gonna sell snacks on the train but just gonna be prepared just in case and this Okay, yeah. 140. 
Okay, so how do you book these trains? Well, it was quite a process. First of all, you have to go to this website to register. I think it's a government website that has all your details on it and then you get a registration number. And you have to pay a little fee, but I mean, it's like one dollar. It's not even bad at all. Then, once you've done that, you can actually book on that platform if you're a certain country. So it can accept a whole bunch of different payments. Unfortunately, none of them work for us. I think it's because we're South African or something so this is when you use the ease my trip website when you use that it accepts all credit cards we actually booked our flight to layer on that platform too it's brilliant yeah then you just book the train ticket there alternatively you can just ask a local Indian friend to book the whole thing for you it's much easier because when you get to the platform choosing your train you'll see there are so many and it's a bit complicated so that brings me to the next question which trains should you pick well luckily we have our Indian friend Varun and he advised us that there's two that are really good it's the Shatabdi Express and the Rajani uh, we're taking the Rajani today because it was the only one available and so far so good. They are really really cheap train rides but we've heard that some of them don't have, well most of them don't have air conditioning, they're not comfortable and the process isn't as easy as this one has been so yeah so far we can really really recommend Rajani. I'll put the name on the screen so you know which one I'm talking about. I watched a couple of videos of people like really stressed out about these trains saying that it's I don't know stressful and hard to find your cabin and your seat and everything but dude that literally wasn't the case for us it was so easy and that's because I just asked the guys questions there's men dressed in IT CTC uh, uniforms just ask them and they'll help you or just show them your ticket and they'll show you where it's so easy man. I even had to take a Xanax. I was so stressed out about this. <laughs> it's easy. And also another tip is to get here early so that you're not stressed. We arrived about 50 minutes before it leaves. 5-0. The train was already here. We could get on. We could get into the air conditioning and just relax, put our bags away. And now we just wait. And we're leaving soon soon. It's raining now, but does that mean the train's gonna go in the rain? Yes. Is it going to be okay? It's going to be fine. Okay. So after sweating outside and then coming into the air conditioning now, it's pretty chilly. I don't want to get sick. Very big, very nice. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Huge amount of water. Yep. Water. Book food, download the food on track mobile app. Pretty cool. Yes, they smell by putting it on the bottle. Mm. Cheers. Overall, I'm very, very impressed with this whole experience so far. Super chuffed. And for 1,250 rupees, which is around 250 rand, it's very good value. Okay, let's go have a look at the toilets on this train. Basin, and then there's also a basin outside, so pretty yeah, basic, very clean. Just don't know how Claire's gonna manage squatting while this train goes. So, basically, what you do here is you get your squat stance, put your feet here, and you go down, and that's how you go to the loo. And honestly, it's the most natural way, apparently. For the human body, it's the best way for digestion. But the only thing is, it's pretty shaky, bro. <laughs>
so that is really a nice surprise. Just a whole plate of snacks. Very interesting ones too. <gasps> I'm so excited for this. Snack mukbang. Mm -hmm. These are all new, new, new things. I have no idea what they are. What's this? And there's even a hand sanitizer. Oh. How cute is that? Oh. Oh. Tea. I guess they're gonna bring you some hot water. Tea yeah. and oh. sugar. Yeah. I guess they're probably gonna bring some hot water soon. How oh, sweet, man. I think this is the best train experience we've had so far. South Africa. South Africa. Yeah. yeah. You're you know? Yeah, yeah. AB Davilias. Yes. Where's the rickshaw? Rickshaw, rickshaw. Where? Auto rickshaw. Yes, where? Yes, yes. Yeah? Taxi are not allowed. No. no. Yes. Yeah, auto rickshaw, tuk tuk. Yeah. Tuk tuk. Yes. Tuk tuk. Only tuk tuk. <laughs> right, we're just getting escorted somewhere. Luggage like, yeah, here, no problem. Yes. Oh, okay. I'm okay. Yes. Wouldn't be India without a couple cows here and there. One tip I can give you is pack lights because uh, dragging bags around is quite difficult. And the terrain is pretty uh, muddy, dirty, and it's really not paved at all. <laughs> Literally hundreds of parakeets. Hundreds. Look big side. Okay, thank oh, yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. No, I mean, hundred rupees. Okay. Sorry, Joey. Joey's hostel. Joey's hostel. Yeah. Yes, I have no problem. Do you know? Go store I can go and you go. Okay. Thank you. Bye. I don't know. Rich and clear. Rich and clear. YouTube channel, yes? Good morning from Agra. We are quite literally 400 meters away from the Taj Mahal today. Checked into a hostel. Today's mission is besides showing you around the hostel, 
we're going to go try find a nice cafe to do some work because tomorrow we are going to see the Taj very early in the morning. So starting off with the room we have here, we are currently staying at Joey's Hostel. It is right literally around the corner from the Taj Mahal. First impressions, you know, it's a hostel. It's kind of grungy in places, including our room. But <clears throat> like you can see things like this wall, for example, is just like peeling and like same thing in the bathroom up there. It's kind of messy. There's weird things going on <laughs> on the roof. But there's a little desk area to do some work. There's a small little cupboard and there's an air conditioner. The door handle's all messed up. <laughs> At least there's a bolt up here to lock it. And that's the bed. It was pretty comfortable. We slept well. You said you slept well? Yeah. yeah? Like a baby, actually. Yeah. This plugs to charge everything and at least this room has a nice little window out of the view. The internet from here is atrocious, <laughs> really bad. We don't get any uh, internet signal from here, but we'll take you down to the common room. The common room is just one floor down and there is some pretty good internet. The reason why we chose this hostel though is because it's the first thing that comes up. It's really affordable and the rooftop has amazing views of the Taj Mahal. It's incredible. So you can just sit there, eat lunch, and stay at the Taj Mahal for free. Like you don't even have to go and visit the Taj Mahal. Obviously you would though. Third of all, there's lots of expats and tourists that come here and apparently the staff are really friendly and helpful with like everything you need, arranging tours, trains for you, all sorts. So if you're like a solo traveler wanting to meet people or need help from staff, then this is a really good option for you. I've asked them for a couple of things, like a chair to work on, and they were so helpful and obliging. They actually even moved our rooms because the Wi-Fi in our first room was really bad, non-existent. <laughs> but over here, we just get it on our laptops. The phones don't pick it up, unfortunately, but there is now 4G signal, which we can use as a backup from this room. Plus there's a window, which the other room didn't have, so it's an upgrade. Yeah, so this is basically the common room, just to chill, there's some books to read, and then the modem is right up there, so the signal is very good, and the internet speed is 20 megabytes down, 20 meg megabytes up, which is more than enough to upload a vlog last night, so we can't complain. Let's go check out the terrace. This is actually why we chose this hostel. There's the Taj Mahal right here. Free views on the rooftop here, it's awesome. This is where you have dinner and lunch and breakfast, I think, if you want. Whoa! Last night we had some biryanis. They were 200 rupees per meal, so quite affordable. That's like 40 rand. And then they have a breakfast here that you can order for 250 rupees and it's a whole bunch of stuff like fruit, oats, pancakes, eggs but as you can see it's definitely got that hostel vibe to it there's writing all over the wall messages from people that have stayed here before yeah it is a bit dirty to be honest but it is it is it is a hostel so you're saving money you're getting to meet people so it has its benefits and there's a goat and there's a couple goats randomly just in the background but here we go walking to find some way to do some work now we just want to have a look thank you oh. hello yeah cool. that was the weirdest thing we walked out of our hostel looking for a place called moon terrace Phew, there's a lot of stairs. Took a left, took another left, walked back into our building and it turns out the roof terrace is like three stories above our own hostel room. So that's pretty convenient. Beautiful views up here. Look at this view of the Taj. Look at our office view today. Look what's right here. We're working here and we've got the Taj in the background. 
Oh my gosh. If you told me a few years ago that I would be working in front of the Taj Mahal just casually on a Wednesday morning, I would have told you there's no ways. This is just, this is surreal. So yeah, that's what makes this hotel so amazing is the rooftop restaurant that they've got here now. And they offer yoga lessons whenever you want on the terrace with the view of the Taj Mahal. So it's cheap, yeah, it's dirty and not great, but it's worth it. Time to catch a tata again. Hello, how are you? Welcome. <laughs> Yay, thank you. <laughs> South Africa. Thank you. So the average tuk-tuk ride in Agra is about 100 rupees for about a 15 to 20 minute drive. It's so affordable and we highly suggest getting uh, tuk-tuks instead of taxi cars because the cars aren't allowed everywhere in Agra. So yeah, that's my tip of the day. Okay, we just got dropped off by our tuk-tuk and we're trying to find this place. I don't know if we're in the right place, but come join us on this wee little walk down the street to find the COVID space. The signage in India is like quite difficult and it's always changing. People are always changing their names of their restaurants and stuff. Oh my gosh, yes. Every place starts changing their name. Even Suzuki has changed their name. Oh, there we go. Space and Mugs. Where? Oh, yeah. there we go. You're getting digging but no. Space and Mugs. No, it's further up. Smells nice, eh? Mmm. Hello. This is space and mugs? Yeah, no, no. No, down yet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. Okay, thank you. What's was? I told you. <laughs> the Perch Cafe is now. Hello. Hello. This is a co-working. Oh, wait. We can work? Yeah, yeah, for okay. sure. Where can we sit? Uh, you want private or open? Uh, uh, do you want private so you can use this one? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. okay, that was a bit of a fail. On to the next one. It's supposed to be, have been a co working spot called Space and Mugs, but I think it's changed to the Purge Cafe. Where it's just like loud music, no lights, strobe lights kind of a vibe. So, off to try and find something else. Do you have Wi Fi? Wi Fi? Okay. Hello. So after searching for places to work at, we finally ended up here at the Shiro's Hangout. It's a cafe I've heard of and read on blog posts and I didn't expect being here to be so emotional. Not only does it have really great Wi-Fi and really nice places to work at, which is just, it's, that doesn't even matter. The fact is this cafe is run by acid attack survivors and they all work here and they are beautiful women. Their stories are so inspiring. When you get here, you come and watch the documentary of what happened to each of the ladies working here and what the foundation is about. It's okay, thank you. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> yes, they are survivors, not victims. And it was really an emotional roller coaster, and um, yeah, it was very special being here. And yeah, please, if you are ever in Agra, do come to the Shiro's Hangout and support these incredible women. It was a privilege to be able to work here today. So when you are here, it is a donation-based cafe, so you pay whatever you feel like for the food and the drinks. The food is amazing, so are the drinks. And they have a whole bunch of merchandise that you can buy. I bought a Shiro's t-shirt. I love it, it's just awesome. And that's such a special t-shirt that I'm going to carry around the world with me uh, to remind me of this day. So ATMs are few and far between, but luckily, Heroes has helped me out with the driver. He's going to take me to the ATM to quickly draw some money. Thank you. Thank 
Thank you. That was awesome, super efficient. Thank you, my friend. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> He's happy. <laughs> Thank you for having us. She was hang out. Yeah. Hectic. Very beautiful and special and yeah. Just booked our Taj Mahal tickets with the little family next door. Little boy was very cute and that was really easy and it was a hundred extra per person just to do it through them. Alright, that's gonna basically be the day we just grabbed a couple parathas. These are potato parathas. I absolutely love them. And then I've got like a mixed veg curry here from upstairs. And leftover rice and potato from yeah. Shiro's. So we're gonna have a nice feast and get an early night because tomorrow morning, five o'clock, it's Taj Mahal time. That's what we're here for. in the morning we got our online tickets we on our phone and we just scanned the QR codes at the gates which is very easy then we pass through a quick uh, security check they check your bags they check literally everything inside your bags they take away all of your snacks <laughs> and uh, that's about it now we're through Wow we are currently just walking in the entrance oh nice better than the Doha Airport Wow, this is already so amazing. Look at the green grounds. We're one of the first 10 people to enter the Taj Mahal. And then look behind me. Panic! Monica. Get there now! What? The flip. some foot covers on now because the government's asked us to polish the floors a bit <laughs> just joking we're gonna keep it nice and clean and protected from all of the wear and tear that can happen from shoes <laughs> This is truly, truly a spectacular experience. This whole compound is insane. I didn't realize how big it was. The gardens are just perfect. The birds, the trees, and the building, of course. Uh, we couldn't film inside, but uh, the detailing inside was just gorgeous. You need to come here and see it for yourself. There is one thing, though, that really sucks, and I feel like big places like this always have one thing that really takes away from it and it's the dudes that come here and try and hackle you all the time they'll say yeah I'll show you the big best photo spots come do it here then they start taking photos for you and they're running around helping you and they will expect a payment after that they're not doing it out of the kindness of their heart although they say I'm not a guide here I work in the gardens here I've worked here for 30 years so yeah just be aware of that I think just if you don't want photos taken or you don't want to pay someone to take photos just ignore those guys they are quite rude honestly and annoying and it was the same at TOT what kind of people also hackled us there so 
realize that's just something you have to deal with but otherwise it was amazing and highly recommend you have to come and see one of the wonders of the world it's just fruit it's amazing for a little bit of history this was actually built in 1632 as a testament to the late uh, mogul king's wife that passed away during her 14th childbirth um, it was his favorite wife so he decided he's going to build this entire Taj Mahal in her memory and have her entombed right in the middle and when he died 40 years later he was entombed next to her and that is the only thing that is not symmetrical in this entire compound they basically put his tomb right next to her so there's two tombs so he's slightly off center that kind of screws with Cleary's OCD yeah, and I'm wondering also what Rhett is going to build for me because, like, this is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Got a tough task to beat this. I mean, there were even some special gems and pearls that have been taken out now, unfortunately, but th this entire place was, like, filled with gems and crazy. Just, it's insane. I believe the maximum amount of time you can spend in here is about three hours on a busy day. They will usher you out if you've been here for longer than that. But otherwise I recommend you come at the same time we did, really early, and then just really enjoy the two, three hours after sunrise. There's a beautiful breeze, it's not hot, there's so many trees, it's incredibly beautiful to just come and relax. You can even just sit on these benches and just admire this magical, magical place. I only got three hours of sleep last night, and if you know me, I need about nine hours of sleep so yeah feeling pretty <laughs> tired it was so worth it though but yeah time to get some breakfast because i'm starving and we're also going to be checking out of our hostel and moving into a new one i think it's also a 25 dollar place so yeah let's go check that out hey, you. Hey. Sure. Tired. Yeah, it's hot. If you're looking for a really good place to have breakfast right after you visit the taj mahal i recommend coming to chia taj view I'll put a link to the cafe in the description so you can see where it is on Google. It's formerly known as Moon Terrace, but it's now Chia Taj View. We had a quick two hour sleep after the Taj Mahal and breakfast. Now we're going to attempt to walk down the road mm -mm. to, with our bags, to the next place we're staying at. No idea what it looks like, but we'll find out very soon. You walk anywhere around this area in Agra. You're gonna get a million times if you want. Rickshaw. Granted, they're very cheap. It's only like 50 or 100 rupees for a ride. So pretty much anywhere in Agra. But yeah, there's just tons of them asking you over and over and over and over. Your reservation? Yes, uh, to... Please Your name? Clay. Welcome drinks. This is your chai. Oh, thank yeah. you. That is for you. Thank you. Welcome to chai. One size for people. And we are, we are enjoying it. That's the most important thing. Oh, okay. Enjoying your life. At oh. least after one day when I'll be like 90. 90? Nah. 70. <laughs> I don't care about number but I just want like you know that at least the last day of my life I should like you know sit properly like this and having fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah not like you know living my life like oh god take me up. <laughs> <laughs> I should say god one more day. Uh, Give me one more day. <laughs> Give me one more day. Tomorrow Goa. Tomorrow Goa. <laughs> Check your bathroom, that's the most important thing in a visit. Wow! Oh, 
romantic lie. Did you see that? Yeah, it is like you know when you go inside, you need like 10, 20 second to search the switch. Yeah. So you know, for 30 second, 20 second, this light automatically turns on. Brilliant. Yeah. Oh my goodness gracious me! Look at these Wi-Fi speeds. 90 up, 40 down, and it's in our room, on the bed. Yay! Finally Wi-Fi that works in the room! This is great! <laughs> this is Lucky Guest House, just 200 meters down from Joey's Hostel. We were staying in Joey's Hostel before. It's also $15 a night and this one is also $15 but it's a guest house. It's a little more private and the Wi-Fi is incredible. There's a restaurant on site, a rooftop bar area and a little viewpoint and it has views of the Taj Mahal as well so this is a really good option too they're both in the same street so that's pretty cool so the hostel you'll choose if you want to meet up with people just note that there's no Wi-Fi in the rooms and this you'll stay at if you want more privacy and a good place to work at our room is so cozy a nice bed amazing air conditioner a little workspace for it TV storage and the bathroom is great with really good lighting for makeup Tali time, Tali time The first Tali in India Okay, yeah, first Tali in India It's gonna be a vegetable Tali Basically what a Tali is is a bunch of different sauces and curries on one plate with chapati which is a roti and rice yeah. So it's a whole bunch of stuff you don't even have to choose you just get it on a plate and it's yeah and I got a banana lassi, which is actually really good. I think it's important to drink banana lassis because it's like made with curd, which has got a good probiotic. So when you get to a new country, try have some curd. It helps uh, get those natural uh, bacteria into your body straight away so that your stomach just copes with the food in the country. Lunch is finished. Stomach is full. This is a trend in India. We eat so well here. The meals were so affordable. Guys, I think it was 25 rand for that meal. And it was amazing not too spicy yeah I'm gonna finish up here head back to the room and work using that awesome Wi-Fi Ali vegetable tali lovely <laughs> dinner right. time and I'm feeling ill so, orange juice it is. Again, this whole meal was like 200 rupees. And it's gonna feed us both the drinks and the meal. All right, well, that's gonna be the day. See you in the morning. We're off again, moving to a new room this morning. The owner here wants to show us his best and favorite room. Unfortunately, it wasn't available yesterday. So he's moving us to it today. We've also booked our tickets for Agra Fort on the website. We weren't able to do it the first time around for the Taj Mahal, but I was able to get it working on the laptop. I'll just put the link to the website you go to down below to book those tickets. The Agra Fort is 500 rupees per person, which is like- Bargain. 250 Rand for two people. That's pretty, good. pretty cheap. I've been in this air-conditioned room the whole day and as soon as I go here the heat dude oh my god I can't I'm going back in it must be around 38 degrees 40 degrees out there it's like a hundred percent humidity that's insane I don't think it's as, <laughs> I don't think it's as bad as the, the hostel Namaste. 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 So, ready to root to move to the Yes, we are always ready to move. Okay. <laughs> okay good. Good room. Cool. Yeah, my brother is full. Like this. Yeah. Bye. It's time to book our train to Jaipur and the ILCTC account decided it's not going to work for us anymore so we've come to this little shop here and they're going to do it for us. It's so much easier if you just ask a local to help you because then you don't have to verify and have cell phone numbers and all these things so let's go. Our friends here are booking us a ticket. Oh, yeah. okay, thank, thank you so you. We appreciate it.
Thank you. Thank you very much. We missed the red fort in Delhi, but we weren't going to miss Agra fort. This place is so impressive. It is massive. The walls are like 50 meters high. It's crazy and it's just amazing to just think how the old battles must have been carried out in this area. It must have been so hard to breach these walls and to get into the palace where the old kings used to reside. Oh, it's the detailing for me though. Beautiful. I think we spoke about the price, it's actually really cheap to visit this place and then we just took a, it was like 20 rand, about 100 rupees in the uh, rickshaw from our hotel to get you. It was just about a 10 minute drive so it's really nearby, I highly recommend you make the mission to come and see Agrafort. Shah Jahun's palace right now, it is looking very much like the Taj Mahal with all the marble extremely beautiful to see lots of gems still in the walls we just visited his famous prayer room where he oh it's the most beautiful room in this whole place yeah so that's every morning he'd wake up and it faces east straight to the taj mahal and if you don't know the history his wife was buried in the taj mahal first in uh, 1632 and basically every morning he'd wake up have a prayer and look at the taj mahal and shame he had to live about 45 years without his wife and then when he did die in that prayer room they just took him to the river and took him straight to the Taj Mahal and then buried him next to his wife. It's quite romantic. Yeah, so Sad. Yeah. gosh it's quite the workout walking around this place. It is massive. It's much bigger than the Taj Mahal. It took eight years to build which is half the time it took to build the Taj. It's pretty impressive I must say. Apparently they used over 8,000 people to build this. Crazy. Our time in Agra has come to an end, but we've still got so much more to show you. In fact, the best is yet to come. So let's check into this luxurious hotel and show you what $100 can get you in Jaipur, India. We are on the third stop of the famous Indian Golden Triangle. We're here in Jaipur in Rajasthan. So far it is gorgeous, but Jaipur has really beautiful heritage hotels scattered around and you can easily spend around $700 on a hotel. Unfortunately, $100 is about our maximum. This is how much we spend when we want to treat ourselves. And $100 is really good value here in India. Let's check this place out. Welcome to the room tour. Whoa. Look at this place. It is literally turquoise, which is my favorite color. The ceiling is amazing. This is the superior twin room and it is pretty huge but let's take you through all the things that are included in this room first of all we've got a coffee and tea making station we got welcome drinks as well cherry or raspberry nice little drinks we also got welcoming desserts here we've got a tv behind us and it's small you don't need it i've never watched tv in a hotel room ever before so that's just it's nice to have um, this is the big air conditioning it cools off this entire room and then we've got the twin beds behind us super soft super comfortable and very luxurious linen two little seats here and i'm a bit of a history buff and so is red we love little touches that i don't know we love antiques and stuff and this little stool is just so cute i don't know it looks like it's gold plated or something i don't know it's yeah. so cute, isn't it? It is cute. And then in, in the corner of the room, there's doors there. We thought it went to the shower, but they don't open, but they've got big brass um, locks on them. Just, I just think it's so fascinating. This is a heritage hotel, which means it holds so much history. And it was once a hunter's lodge. And the best part is this hotel is run and owned by the royal family. <gasps> we read on booking.com that it's family run. But it happens to be a royal family that's running it. <laughs> so there are very royal touches. Red's got his workstation already set up there with a beautiful little lamp. But oh my gosh, guys, please 
Look at this bathroom. Just, it's the most beautiful bathroom I have ever seen in my life. <gasps> Let's be honest, have you ever seen such a gorgeous bathroom in your life? I thought the room was pretty, but then when I walked in here, my breath was literally taken away, and I'm not exaggerating. This is not a collaboration, by the way. We're paying for this. We just thought we'd treat ourselves since we've been doing very cheap accommodations recently, and it's nice to have a very comfortable stay once in a while, especially when you're creating content and stuff. You really just need to zone into the editing. Anyway, off track, we've got tons of towels, two of everything. We've got a beautiful dressing cupboard. It's got hangers and a safe, and they do laundry here as well. We've got a hair dryer. And, oh yes, air conditioning in here as well. And this, oh, Honestly, isn't this just so beautiful? They give you all sorts of soaps, conditioners, shampoos. They even give you a loafer. We've never been to a hotel that gives you a loafer. Like, I don't know, that's a really nice touch. Anyway, we've got some incense here. This beautiful mirror with turquoise. <gasps> Laundry basket over here. We've got the toilet. Honestly, like, just, just look at this. Anyway, we've got the bun gun, toilet paper, very rare in India, and then this massive shower. Honestly, biggest shower we've ever seen, I think. And look at the tiling. Oh my gosh. And then some more shampoos and soaps and all sorts. And the pressure of the shower is, and the temperature is so good too. That's important for it. <laughs> like, We've had cold showers with like dribbling water. And yeah, so dribbling really water nice. and cold showers recently, it hasn't been fun. But I think that's pretty much it for the room tour. Oh my gosh, I decided as soon as we walked in here that Red and I are going to have a bathroom that looks just like this one day when we build a home. Thank you. One of the things that come complimentary with your stay is a quick seven minute head and neck massage. It was a good little taste into what their spa offers because they do have a spa, they have a gym as well and a restaurant on site. I think we might book a little spa treatment later. Now we're walking the grounds to show you the different rooms. Basically everything is so picturesque and natural and quiet, which is something we haven't experienced in the last week or so. Oh my goodness, that was a very comfortable and solid sleep because I think it was just so quiet. All right, time for breakfast, let's go. Oh my goodness, this hotel has been such a treat. We had an incredible sleep last night. The linen in the bed was so soft and comfortable. The temperature was perfect. And the best part about this place is that it is so quiet. We're so used to the loud noises. In fact, the one night was so overwhelmed with the noises here in India because there was a festival going on. But here yeah, it's peaceful, it's quiet. I don't know if you can hear the birds. They're tweeting away. It is just stunning, the sound of the pool. There's greenery everywhere and all sorts of plants. Oh, this is pure bliss and it's such a wonderful way to spend your time here in Jaipur. We highly recommend this place. If you do want to book this, you can go to booking.com. We'll leave the link in the description for you. It was just under $100, which is really, really good value. It does come with breakfast, which was awesome this morning. You have a full selection from fruits, granolas, yogurts, pancakes, muffins, omelets, just all sorts of stuff. And you can eat, I think, as much as you want. And yeah, obviously really good coffee too. Another thing we really liked was that the staff are so polite. They speak English and yeah, they're just ready to serve with whatever you need. This hotel definitely gives off very luxurious vibes. Not only is the decor very luxurious, but the staff, the way they treat you, all the amenities, the room, 
all of that is quite quite posh <laughs> and for only a hundred dollars a night that's a freaking bargain because we paid maybe 350 USD for our New York hotel room that was tiny and the staff were non-existent so oh my gosh India is turning out to be one of the cheapest countries we visited and really really good value for money. After spending some time in this wonderful hotel we head across town to a popular homestay where we base ourselves for the next few days as we explore the pink city. What's your name? Puro. We're just having our welcome drinks and then a tour of the house and then we're going to see our room. The house is six stories. There are 18 rooms spread across two floors. Each room is massive. They have their own private bathroom and most of them have a private beautiful balcony as well. Okay, welcome to the first level. This is where you receive your welcome drinks and you go into the dining room. The dining room is where the magic happens. It's where you get your breakfasts, your lunches and your dinners all for a small little price, but it's all amazing, amazing food. We'll talk more about the food a little bit later though. Let's carry on with the tour. So this is the first level. There are 12 rooms here for the 12 months of the year. Okay, we're gonna start this room tour off with the balcony because it is so gorgeous and it's not often that you get a balcony. We've got two seats here with a table, beautiful plants in front of us, lots of greenery all around the house actually you'll see. We've got a view of this gorgeous building. I don't know if it's abandoned but it's the amazing Draipur architecture. There's an Indian flag and we just have beautiful views of the neighborhood here. Great people watching but anyway let's come through the sliding doors into this bedroom. This is Rhett's workstation here. I absolutely love this little chair and stool for you to just relax and just take in the sounds of dry purr. We've got these two single beds, they're stunning. Linen is amazing. And once again, some more antiques. I just love antiques in India. They are stunning. I wish I could export them back home. <laughs> Air conditioning is great in here. There's a fan and the lighting is also really good. Then let's go to the bathroom. This bathroom is pretty freaking amazing. It's so big, there's even a fan. No expenses were spared in the making of these rooms. They are so spacious. They give you shampoo, conditioner, and body wash. And then this entire closet area for you to put all your luggage in and your clothing. The perks of this place though is that it feels like homestay but it also feels like a luxurious hotel. It is just the perfect mix. I think you should definitely stay here if you're ever in Jaipur. Okay, now this is where it gets so beautiful and this is coming to my favorite area. beautiful is this area let's take you outside though so this is the first of the four outside levels that you get to just come and do your own thing we've actually been using this area as a working area it's so nice and then out here are all the plants there's hundreds of them and if you know us, we love nature and plants and flowers. So I've been spending some time out here just relaxing. Red's had a stomach bug ever since we got here. But I've just been out here observing nature and then there's just 180 views of the city. Basically 360 apart from this little area to the right. And you can watch the daily lives of local people here in the neighborhood and you can pretty much see the whole city, even the mountains and a fort and all sorts. Time to eat. Oh my gosh, this is by far the best part about this entire homestay. 
It's the food. Oh my goodness. Look at the colors and the taste and the... I wish you could smell this too. <laughs> We've been battling stomach bugs, flus, all sorts, so we pretty much haven't explored Jaipur at all. We've just been staying in the hotels, resting and doing work, but it's finally time to see what it has to offer. Welcome to Jaipur, the third stop on the Golden Triangle tourist route. Also known as the Pink City with a population of 4.1 million and the capital of Rajasthan. Today we found ourselves an awesome driver to take us to Jaipur's top tourist attractions. We've seen a couple of pictures of some of the monuments we're visiting today and they look incredible. I'm so excited to visit them finally. We have a driver that's taking us all around today. Very excited. Gate name Ajmeri Gate. Uh -huh. So this gate here to start from, from the Pink City. Okay. You are welcome the Pink City. Thank you. Welcome. Wow, it really is. It's like red and pink everywhere. And you know why pink color? Sandstone. Sandstone? No, actually, it's Jaipur King, friend of the British friend, the name of the Prince Albert. That time King thinks our friend is coming. I want to something special. Then King worker tell them King inside city make a pink color. When you make a pink color, then pink city looking so beautiful. King like very much. Yeah. Then King say all the time make a pink color. No any the color change. Okay. That's why the pink city. We've actually officially started the tour and we've just entered one of the seven gates into the pink city and no cap, I think Jaipur might be my favorite city so far. It is amazing, the architecture, the colors, the design, there's so many things to look at and it's so photographic, I love it. First stop is the beautiful city palace which lies at the heart of Jaipur and it was the administrative and ceremonial seat of the Maharaja of Jaipur. So yeah, let's go there now, excited! If Red wasn't still feeling sick, we would have done the Royal Palace exclusive tour which costs around 3 to 5 thousand rupees per person. It's a private tour of the Royal Residence with a personal guide and our friends highly recommended it. Instead, we went with the composite tour which was around 700 rupees for a tour of the courtyards, Jai Garth and Royal Cenotaphs. So the king, this is the king, he's here, uh, he's 24 years old, so good looking, hopefully we get to see him, but we know he's here because there's two flags flying. Goodness, that was so awesome, I'm so sad we couldn't phot photograph that for you, it's like all the old royal robes and dresses and freaking oh my gosh it was beautiful there's even one from china and from russia hey chap wasn't that so cool cashmere silk real gold hold a second now Okay, right now I'm looking at the biggest pot in the world, yeah. made out of pure so, silver. Pure. 350 kilograms? 345 kilograms. Okay. The king was so lavish, he wanted to take his own water from India all the way to England in these big, big pots. They carry over 2,000 liters of water. How insane. So entrance on this tour was 700 rupees each and then you can opt to get your own guide if you want which is another 400 rupees just for the whole tour and we're doing about a 35 minute tour but you can go up to an hour there's no limitation on the time it just depends on you as with most tours we got taken to a small shop selling pashmina wool products where they tried to sell us their overpriced stuff for what felt like 30 minutes Apart from this, the tour was definitely worth it though. We also feel hiring the guide was worth it too. He can assist you in taking some photos and give you a more detailed understanding of what the history and the significance of the palace was. You want to go to Yes, yes, please. So now we've been told to come to this cafe 
called Tati Cafe, which is right across from Hawa Mahal, our next stop. And yeah, it's right across the road, it's great. Yeah. While we're waiting for our food, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Hawa Mahal, which is right behind us. So basically it is still within the palace complex, it was just a short drive around the corner it's at the edge. It's a palace built of red stone and pink stone, so it's actually not painted as far as I know, like the rest of the city. It was built in 1799 by the founder of Jaipur's grandson. This was designed specifically for these royal queens to be able to watch the daily life down below and to watch the festivals without being seen by the public because they had to follow very strict rules called purda, which, or purda, I don't know if I'm saying it right, which prevented, which forbade them from being seen by the public without a covering over their face. So they would sit in the little windows there, you can see them, you can't even see in, and they would watch. I think it's beautiful, it's stunning. The architecture is so impressive. good meal at the Tattoo Cafe can highly recommend you try it out. I think the total for two meals and two drinks was 1,300 rupees. Okay, okay. They just flight to build this one. Okay. Something I'm finding very interesting here in India is they really love their pigeons. Like they feed them stuck in the back. Bags and bags of seeds. <laughs> Exploring the roads, we're seeing a couple of camels here and there, which is quite cool. Uh, apparently, Rajasthan has quite a big camel population. Yeah, this is the city of the cows and the camels. <laughs> They're just everywhere. They're so cute. Next stop is the Amber Fort, which is apparently an incredibly beautiful place according to Clary. Yeah, according to Google. Inside is actually really good. Sorry, you can't see. <laughs> Oh, it's okay, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. He's such a cute monkey, but damn, he's naughty and he's missing one arm. But he literally just jumped on these motorbikes, two of them in a row, and like pushed them over on purpose. Flippin' naughty. When you come here, you're gonna be saying no to a lot of things. One of the things is hawkers are everywhere, selling all sorts of things. Number two, guides, guides, guides and more guides. Everyone wants to be your guide. It's up to you if you want to take a guide. Most of them are, you know, able to speak English. I don't think any other languages. Yeah, they're there and then there's tons of curio shops on your way out as with most tourist attractions. 
tons of shops to buy things at. The entrance to the palace where we are now was uh, 500 rupees per person and we did not choose a guide we just have these boards all over the place and you can just read and see the history for yourself. So I won't lie this has been one of the most annoying experiences we've had in India so far. People have been harassing us. There's been tour guides that have offered us their services and when you say no they have such an attitude and one of them spat on red so I don't know if I can actually recommend this place it's beautiful but it's being ruined by so many of the locals unfortunately it's a real freaking pity I hate when this happens because history is kind of like not even your focus anymore it's more just like getting through the crowds and through the rude people and saying no thank you all the time trying to be so polite and yet they still have the biggest attitudes yeah and there's even signs that say you should complain to somebody about the hawkers here so then you know it's a problem certainly a beautiful place but unlike the the agri fort it's not really regulated and looked after especially with regards to who they're letting into the compound and who can be allowed to bother the tourists it's very overwhelming so just be warned um, it is a bit of a fiasco so come if you want but it's not at the top of our list of recommendations. Bad experience? Yeah, that's day. fine. It yeah, happens. of course. I guess you have a bad experience, then I am sad. Oh no, oh, don't, yeah, don't worry. Don't about worry. It. This is not good. For yeah. the, like a bad experience about like a, you know the reputation of the reputation. Yeah, the reputation of uh, Rajasthan and Jaipur. Yes. Yeah. We out of the chaos and being hassled. Um, I just want to say that it is very, very beautiful. The, the I think it was his room that was just covered in mirror work. It was so unique. I've never seen something like that before. And this fort was so big. You could tour even more, go on and on and on. You could spend like, like two to three hours there, I rate. Unfortunately, we're trying to catch sunset at our next destination. So we're like panicking. I do think I would recommend it, but maybe try and go early, early morning when there's not a lot of people there. And that way you don't have the hawkers harassing you, the monkeys trying to kill you, and the locals asking for photos every two meters. So yeah, do go. And I think it's actually really good to get a guide or a driver that will just be ready to pick you up as soon as you, you're done there and take you to the next place. It's been so, so efficient to have Sadiq. So. Thank you Sadiq, thank you for your time. If you want to maybe use Sadiq in the future when you are in Jaipur, we will leave his WhatsApp and contact details to his TripAdvisor page down in the description so you can go check him out. is the final stop here in Jaipur, it's Nahagar Fort. This is what makes it unique, it just overlooks the entire city. And apparently it used to be like a defense circle for the entire city of Jaipur. That's about all I know about this one, unfortunately. <laughs> mosques spread across Jaipur doing the prayer at 7 p.m. sharp. Wow, it's amazing. <laughs> Love. That's tobacco. People have been spitting tobacco in this monument. Can you believe it? We absolutely loved our time here in Jaipur and can highly recommend that you visit. For now, it's time to get on a train, then a plane, and head to our final and favorite part of India. We're in Leh! 3,500 oh meters above sea level, 11,000 feet. This is unlike any place we have ever visited. Wait till you see this place. Ah! Leh 
Ladakh, which is basically in the Himalayas. We're actually surrounded by them right now. Honestly, it is so beautiful. So, so beautiful. The airport was absolutely tiny. It's our smallest airport we've been in so far. And there were military everywhere. We couldn't actually film a lot, so there won't be footage of that. But then we hopped in this cute little freaking cute taxi and made our way to our absolutely stunning hotel. It's actually a budget hotel, believe it or not, but the grounds and the building is so stunning. And there's amazing views of the Himalayas right in front of me over there. Let me show you. It's been a bit of a tumultuous time with sickness and altitude sickness, but we are staying in this beautiful little homestay called the Rock Castle. We'll leave the link for you guys down in the description. Whew, see, out of breath already. <laughs> if you're interested in staying here. I must say, walking around in uh, Le, it's uh, quite challenging. Still haven't adjusted, even four days later. <sighs> Just talking and walking is like out of breath for me. Yeah. It's only 700 meters from the town of Le and we were actually naughty on our first day we did the 700 meter walk and grew, I felt like I was going to die, I nearly fainted. So if we have any tips about when you first come to Le, 48 hours stay at your hotel. And this hotel is lovely because the grounds are awesome, they have a rooftop, they have views for days. Don't do anything for 48 hours, you'll acclimatize and then you can go out exploring. Also, we've been taking altitude sickness tablets even before we got here. Well, Diamox. And I think it helped a lot. I think if I didn't take those tablets, hey chap, I, I would have been so ill. You probably would have had a swollen face like your friend. Some of the side effects of altitude sickness are like a headache, which I got. Sore body, which I got. Nausea and vomiting, I didn't get. Dizziness, I got. Uh, what else? I've just felt so super out of breath. That's all I felt. I haven't had any headaches. Oh, look at all the cars. What is he doing? Oh, oh my goodness. So many cars around in there. Eating the box, you know <laughs> Besides my stomach bug that I picked up, I think in Jaipur, I've been alright. Altitude hasn't been a problem except for shortness of breath. Going up the stairs feels like doing. Um, 30 Little minutes dog. on the friggin' treadmill. Yeah, out of the four of us, I was the only one that actually got altitude sickness symptoms. So yeah, you might not even have anything, but just take Diamox just in case. You can get Diamox yeah. at any pharmacy over the counter. You don't need a prescription. Just love the architecture here. It's just like this typical mountain town vibe with a lot of wood architecture. Very unique, unlike anything we've seen before. It's just so beautiful, but lots of building happening. So it's definitely developing. They're building lots of new hotels and homestays, that kind of thing. The big brands in India are all banned from coming and setting up here. So they want to keep it quite low scale. So I think you can only build like up to five stories. And that's it, keeping it quite quaint. So yes, we had the very top of India and a lot of the locals here look more Tibetan, Mongolian and apparently their ancestors actually do come from Tibet and most of the people here are Buddhist too. So you can hear some jets flying overhead that is because of the military base there's big like military choppers around as well I think they do a lot of their training out here but just to add to the taxi ride the taxi ride from the airport to our hotel was 500 rupees so 100 rand and uh, it was pretty easy, pretty cheap. To get around in Leh, you either need to hire yourself a motorbike, which are all manual motorbikes, they're all these Royal Enfields, or you gotta hail down a taxi, which usually costs like 100 to 200 rupees to get from like the town to your hotel. There's no Uber, there's no Ola, there's or, no rickshaws. Or you organize a driver right from the day one that you get here. That's probably the easiest, but it is quite expensive. Yeah, the driver can cost quite a lot if you want to go to places way out of Leh. So yeah, just keep that in mind. 
together with Buddhists, there is a small Muslim population as well. I think those are the two religions that are prominent here, Buddhist and Muslim. I don't know if Hindu is pro prominent here. Maybe. Actually, yeah. So we're about to get to almost the lead town, the main bazaar street. Before we get there, we've got to walk through a very, very local spot. Check this out. By the way, the way you say hello here in Ladakh is Jule Not Namaste. It's a different language here actually. The Ladakhi language. Very, very quiet now. This place kind of comes alive in the late afternoon and evenings. But right now, during lunchtime, very quiet. Everything seems to be closed. Just a few nice market there. Just a few fruit stands open. That's about it. We are on the hunt for a nice coffee shop to do some work. And obviously, try to find something with some good internet, which can be kind of tough out here. third time coming to this cafe. It's ridiculous, but the food is so nice and so the views. Rhett's actually been having a stomach bug and he's just been craving like really healthy light food and they have that here. They've got like health juices and smoothies and oats, just like light stuff that Rhett is really craving. But then we will eventually take you guys to the Tibetan uh, kitchen restaurant which has incredible Tibetan food. Can't wait for that. <gasps> oh, stop. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's a little bean. This is the cutest cappuccino I ever did see in my life. I don't want to drink it, but I'm craving coffee. I haven't had coffee in like days. I haven't had coffee in a week. Whoa, flip it. One thing I've really been like finding interesting is the taste of coffee in India. Indian beans are so different to what I'm used to because usually you get like South American or African beans, but they have a totally different taste and this one has an even more interesting taste. Really good though, like I really like. We went to Starbucks and had their Indian blend. Delish. This one, so different. It's good though. There you have it. That is why we like this place. The classic oats looks absolutely delicious. And I've got a protein nut smoothie bowl. Wow, this is all the health. Just what we need. Just hope I can eat it all because my appetite has been below zero. And if you have been watching the vlogs, you'll realize that Red is slowly withering away. He's losing so much muscle and weight. He needs protein and healthy food and calories. Okay, Wi-Fi was fast, but it was like struggling to connect. All in all, the meal for two meals and a coffee was 800 rupees. So it's about 170 rand. third one now. I think it's gonna be good. It's quiet, it's hidden away, nice desks and good internet. There's a problem with flies here in Le. Most of the cafes have so many flies. starving absolutely famished and I don't know if you can tell my eyes are so red because I'm suffering from hay fever and dryness <sighs> here's where we eat lunch here's where breakfast is served and lunch and dinner I think 
And look at the views. Awesome. How cute the little setup here for us. Yeah. Little mountain lodge it feels like. And it yeah. looks like it actually on this video. I mean, in the winter this place has like snow all around and it just does feel very like mountainous and beautiful. And there's like a little bit of fireplace going and super cozy. Thank you, Uncle. Yes. Chicken or vegetable? Dun, dun, Chicken fried rice. Moist. Thank you. Okay, no, that's fine. Yeah, just eat with this. One. Okay, double plate. Yes, Makes thank you. Better. Thank you. Still coming off of that bug, so I'm just eating the basics. Like, this is just a chicken sandwich, and clearly has got a chicken fried rice. <laughs> Finally time for some dinner! Oh, I'm hungry! We got a bit of a walk oh. ahead, it's about a 1.2 kilometer walk. And we are going to the Tibetan kitchen, I think Claire's mentioned it a couple times already. Apparently the food is great. So we're finally at the Tibetan kitchen. It's number one on TripAdvisor in terms of restaurants in Leh. And of course we got momos. Actually it's a vegetarian day today because it's a holy day. It's a bit of a bummer though because uncle told us that the tandoori chicken and mutton momos are so delicious. But yeah, we've had to order all vegetarian. These are the veg momos. They look so chunky and yum. Let's try. Those are so good, but I think I prefer Uncle's momos. Woo! Uncle! Uncle! <laughs> I went with the spring rolls. Also, the same thing. Super chunky, like really got a whole bunch of filling in here. And I've tried them, obviously, they are really, really good. Soup! Looks like you've got dumplings in there too. And rice noodles, should be. Eh? Hey. Yeah. All sorts. Glass noodles at the bottom. Glass noodles, dumplings. What do you think the broth Corn. is? Spinach, tomatoes, carrots, green beans, just all the things. <gasps> Is this dumpling good? Mm. I added salt and pepper and it's just so much better. This is like a momo basically. Can't get enough of momos, so I ordered them in the soup. Excuse me? You take them home. Of course. Okay, so the egg fried noodles was actually really, really good. So we got starters, two meals, and a dessert, and two drinks, and it was 260 rand, so 1,350 rupees. Good. Thought it would be an expensive restaurant because it is so well known, and there was a line and everything, but it's still so affordable. It's definitely a local's favorite. There's a ton of Ladakhi families here tonight. Welcome to this beautiful, luxurious hotel located 11,000 feet in the mountains of Ladakh and completely and sustainably made of the earth. This is Chaspa. We have just checked in to Chaspa and first impressions as you enter these doors behind me are just wow. The architecture and the natural textures of this hotel are mind blowing. Come and see for yourself though. So Chaspa was built in a traditional Ladakhi style made from all raw sustainable materials and ethically locally sourced wood. And you'll see the aim of this hotel is to have as little carbon footprint as possible and you'll see that throughout the entire hotel. 
You can see they've been built with clay and some straw in there. It helps to insulate the entire building. If you know anything about this area, we're in the Himalayas, so it does snow, it gets freezing cold. And this way of building this hotel like this, this traditional way, keeps it nice and warm inside. And cool in the summer as well. Got my cute little slippers on so I'm ready to take you on a room tour. We're on the second floor and we're in the club room number 203. Welcome to our room. Tea! Okay so we've got this massive massive bed. I don't think I've actually seen a bed this big. It is amazing. So many pillows and First things first, the decor in this room is incredible. The colors, the textures, the, the natural feel of it. And then we've got this cute little view here of the mountains. And I don't know if you can see in the background, there's snow-capped mountains. Wow, this landscape is just so unique. I don't think we've ever been somewhere like this before. Kind of feels like you're on the moon sometimes. <laughs> then this bathroom. I don't know what it is, but I absolutely love this bathroom. In here there's a hair dryer and then a whole bunch of eco-friendly goodies. Things to mention is because it is a sustainable hotel, there's no air conditioning, but there's absolutely no need for it. There's a fan, it's so cool in here. It's like the perfect temperature in here. And then for winter they've got a, I think this is an oil heater, I'm not sure but that'll provide you with tons of warmth. There's also modems in every room. The Wi-Fi is super good. It's about 50 Mbps. And that is it for the room tour. You can book this on booking.com or directly through their websites as well. We're finally exploring Ladakh Beyond Leh. Today we're heading out on a little road trip five hours southeast to a place called Somariri, which is at an even higher altitude of 14,800 feet. Join us as we explore the most beautiful lakes, remote Ladakhi villages, fascinating thermal fields, the second highest motorable road in the world, and our very first monastery. We've been staying at the beautiful Trasper Hotel in Leh and our first stop is a pharmacy to buy some oxygen. So we've been advised from the staff at Trasper to get an oxygen mask tank thing because we're going up so high and it's just for precautionary measures. We're heading to the pharmacy now. Okay, so this is oxygen, it like weighs 0.5, 0.1 kilogram, it's so light. It's 700 rupees for this can. Hopefully Clary's gonna be gonna shoot you with this thing. Why? When you low. Listen, the odds are I might need this because I was the only one that actually got the symptoms when we got here. Everyone else is fine. This is a nice chemist. He actually takes cards. Which Yay. is literally the first credit card was <laughs> like the time I've used my credit card in Lair. Yeah. Otherwise it's been cash, cash, cash. <laughs> Thank you sir. Thank you so much. See you. <laughs> Yay, got the oxygen. Everything's gonna be okay now. <laughs> got some nice fresh big bananas here, 50 rupees. So 10 rupee a piece. Ready to go. <laughs> Road trip. I don't know if you can see how pink my fingers are. That water is the coldest water I've ever felt in my life. I thought it would be similar to Cape Town water. No, it's literally like ice water. But yeah, this is just stunning, really. This is so cool. We are going on our way to Tomoriri and we have a driver that's taking us there. Usually the cost is around 16,000 rupees at this time of year, which is in the summer. To get you to Tomoriri and back to Leh, it's very expensive, but we have to do a nice road trip around here. Otherwise, we're not going to get to see these beautiful landscapes. It's very, very unique. I think the drive is around a five hour drive, maybe six or seven. We're going to be driving most of the day and then we'll be staying over at the lake tonight and then back to Lair tomorrow. 
And this river is the famous Indus River. So I don't know too many facts about it, but I do know the name. I have heard it in geography before. And there's all sorts of little small towns and beautiful farming going on along the river. So it's just a stunning, stunning place to come visit. It's actually too hot. <laughs> Woo! Okay, so we're halfway down, I think about halfway to Tsomariri, and we've come to this area. There's a whole bunch of thermal energy, so there's extremely hot water boiling. Yeah, you could literally boil an egg. Don't touch it, love. It's like 90 they degrees Celsius over here. Yeah, everybody washes Yeah, no, that's quite hot actually. Oh, yeah, that's. It's like hot bath water. They said it's 16. very medicinal, so we must wash our... I'm gonna wash my arms. I just washed my face. Apparently there's so many minerals in it. I've read articles that it's good for you. I actually feel pretty great. Feels so good. I don't know how to describe it. I can smell a bit of the rotten eggs, but it's not bad at all. Because there's sulfur content in this water. This is my first experience in a thermal area. So we haven't been to Iceland yet, but I didn't expect to see this here. Obviously it's near the Himalayans. I mean, it's one of the biggest, the biggest mountain ranges in the world. And that's because of the two tectonic plates coming together. So there's going to be a lot of thermal energy in the area and very, very cool to see. Chowmeen! Lunch time! Vegetable chowmeen! I'm a little nervous about Actually no, look at the steam. I'm fine. It's gonna be so fine, yeah. It's hot. Oh my goodness! We just spot an entire herd of pashmina goats. If you don't know what pashmina is, it's a type of wool. It's extremely soft. It's quite an expensive thing. And, uh, geez, these are some of the cutest goats I've ever seen in my life. If you saw our Jaipur City Palace tour, you'd know that we went on like a whole pashmina wool tour kind of thing of the royal outfit. Yeah, it comes from these cutie matooties. They're so sweet. They're so small. <laughs> After six hours, we've made it beautifully peaceful here. Whew. Breathing is a little tough, 15,000 feet. But these places are little cuties. Just had a nice cup of coffee, feeling refreshed. It is getting chilly. The sun has just gone down behind the mountain. The lake is huge with snow-capped mountains in the distance. But it's definitely time to put on a KOA jacket. My only issue is it's a little dirty around here, which kind of sucks. But yeah, it's peaceful, it's nice. And the temperature is quite nice too, it's just getting a little chilly now. <laughs> One tip for Ladakh in general, I don't think Claire's mentioned it, is it's very, very dry here. So you need to bring moisturizer, you need to bring eye drops, you need to bring nose spray. We've had very blocked noses because it's just so dry and it's very dusty. So keep that in mind. But let me show you our room quick. We just have a nice big double bed with some fresh water and a kettle. Electricity plugs are all over the place. But electricity only comes on between 7 p.m. and 11 p.m. And then it goes off all the way from 11 p.m. again comes back on only at 7 p.m. So just a few hours of electricity every night. There's a bucket shower. So no normal shower for us tonight. Very warm blankets on our beds. I think we're gonna be very cozy tonight. This room, I'm not sure how much right now, but I heard it's about 3,000 to 4,000 rupees for the night. That includes dinner. You sniffing oxygen? Yeah, I'm an oxygen drug addict. Again? <laughs> You're addicted to it. I am. It's just because I'm getting a headache. Chop, I swear to you, it takes it away. 
It's like magic. I just nearly got a headache and now I can't feel anything. Because your brain just got straight oxygen. Should we always have these for when I get headaches? <laughs> so, this was like 700 rupees, by the way, in this little can. You can breathe 250 times with it. 250 snifferoos. <laughs> Welcome to Tomoriri Viewpoint. This is insane. Look how big this lake is. Look how blue it is. And look at the mountains behind me. Multicolored, snow capped. There's actually snow-capped mountains everywhere around here. It's so cool. We're here just before sunset and it's actually free entrance. So that's awesome. You don't have to pay anything. It's just a stop over here. How's dinner? Dinner's really great. We had a soup to start. Everything's vegetarian. We had paneer. What paneer? Just paneer. Paneer. And dal and rice and chapati and now we're about to have a sweetie which is like vermicelli noodles and milk yeah it's our final morning here we're just about to leave but we came down to the lake to see what it's all about the water is so so clear and calm it's peaceful down here unfortunately the mountains are all in shadow so you can't see much but yeah it's very I'm just bummed about some of the litter though. Kind of sucks. Okay, so we just came to this lake that we saw earlier yesterday. And to be honest, I think I prefer this one to Tomariri. There's like perfect reflections. There's barely anyone here. And it's just, yeah, it's quite clean and, oh man, look at the views, it's beautiful. I would actually recommend coming here if you're looking for the reflective photo kind of thing. We're going to a natural spring slash geezer thing now. In a super mound field, and we have to take our shoes off because it's very moshy. Yay! I'm excited! I love this kind of stuff. Whoa, Jim. This is cool. I love grass. Just joking, I'm out of breath. Here we are. Two for mounds in this beautiful valley. Amazing. I feel like I'm in Lesotho again. I'm in a video game. Tetrasaur. It's like that game we used to play when we were younger. The floor is lava. Don't disappear into the marsh. So the goal is to get to this place over here. There's a little small geezer. But it's pretty far and hard to get to because now it's just pure. Marshland. What if I disappear? Yeah, sinking sand, careful. We made it. We made it! It's stinky, it smells like rotten eggs here, but it's so random. Like, it's so random. It's very muddy on the way through. <laughs> the camera's got mud all over it. This cute little tent now having some vegetarian food. Yeah. This is dal rice and veg. And the little baby brought us some drinks. She was so freaking cute. But this is so comfy. This is Laka. And all the other tourists that we've met along the way have all come here too. It's awesome. We just finished up the lunch in Soka. And it's actually like a salt lake that's there. And there's a little village. And we had a lunch there cooked by the people. It was actually one of my favorite experiences in Ladakh as well. So we've got 
two experiences today that I really enjoyed. Now we are off to Barut. Taglangla. Taglangla. Or oh, Tagalalang. <laughs> <laughs> it's a much better road that we're on now, but it's nice and flat. I must admit, the bumpiness has been hectic. <laughs> All right, I think this is just a quick little viewpoint to stop off at. We're on this huge pass. We are now at, oh, can't even talk and vlog and breathe. We are at 5,300 meters above sea level. So that's like 16,000 feet. I had to put my K-way on, it's so much colder up here. Oh, I can't talk and talk. <laughs> we are basically like right on almost the same level as the snow-capped mountains right now. Correction wasn't 16,000, it's 17 and a half thousand feet. <laughs> it's so high, the 12th highest pass in the world. Let's just say half as high as Mount Everest and half as high as airplanes fly. That's insane. Phew. Little science lesson for you for every thousand feet you go up in elevation, the temperature drops by two degrees Celsius. So at 17 and a half thousand feet, it's a good, well, yeah, a lot colder than at Le. Last stop of the day, we spent a lot of the day in the car. Everyone's very tired, but it's time to visit Tixi Monastery. This is our first monastery we've ever, ever been to. You can immediately tell why it's a nice place for the monks to meditate because it's so far up, perched on the hill and so nice and quiet. We're actually about 22 k's away from the main lair city. Very quiet and peaceful. That was just the most perfect way to conclude the day, although we're so tired. That was so special, it's our first monastery. And one more thing, and I think everybody that does come to Ladakh or Leh in the winter raves about this place, and I can totally understand why. I think if you do plan to come here, maybe come in the, the beginning of winter where the mountains will be covered in snow, the lakes will be frozen, it'll just look so beautiful. Maybe they won't be frozen yet, but I, th I think it'll look so much more beautiful and dramatic and special if it's in the winter. Because right now we're in the, pretty much in the middle of summer, it's quite hot and all the snow has melted away and it's very, very dry and dusty. That final stretch on the road to this monastery was some of the most epic landscape I've actually seen and some of the most quaint, beautiful little towns along the river. Yes, they called Village Miru and Village Gaia. Yeah. If I'll put the names on the screen, so if you want to see the most beautiful views and little villages and farmlands and incredible mountains, then Go check head, those out. head to that area, it's stunning. It's our final day in Ladakh. We've hired a sick Royal Enfield bike for the day for 1800 rupees. We've gathered our National Park tourist passes once more for 1500 rupees per person. And we're off for one last epic adventure. We had no idea that this was going to be our best day in India yet. So there are five things that we wanted to see here in Ladakh. Lakes, mountains, pashmina goats, yaks and nomads. So far we've seen the lakes, we've seen the mountains, 
and we've seen the goats but we haven't seen yaks and we haven't seen nomads yet it's our last day here so we're going to do a quick little road trip over to the high, second highest motorable pass and go down the hill and hopefully we get to see some yaks and nomads so come join us <laughs> It's a little scary chapel in I <laughs> and it's so uncomfortable being a passenger on a bike. They're not that great on the front either. No, but you have no idea. Off. You have nothing to like hold yourself up. You're just yeah. sitting there okay. and you start going like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think this must be the highest kitchen in the world. Nomadic kitchen. It's just got two coffees, 80 rupees each and a Maggie's two minute noodles for 70 rupees. We're just gonna enjoy the view. Wow, this is very fun. It's starting to get a little chilly, and I don't have gloves. Someone just told us that there's snowfall on the pass we're about to go on. Yeah, I'm so excited! <laughs> I've never seen snowfall before. I'm literally gonna cry, I got goosebumps. Well, that's a new animal. Did you hear him? cried. <laughs> I had goosebumps all over my body. That is an exceptional viewing of a yak. Like I just wanted to see one in the distance like I don't know grazing but this guy just walked across the road bro. Oh my gosh this is like the best day ever. rupees nice warm up the hands because they're kind of frozen they're red from sunburn it's not that yeah. they're red from cold <laughs> i can't believe this is my first time seeing the snow it was one of my favorite days of my life oh my gosh <laughs> we saw a yak at snowfall come on it's amazing i can't shake the smile on my face <laughs> Oh, look at this what a vibe, the music, the snowfall, we saw a yak, it's a dream come true today, it's just... I can add a sick thing to my list of things I wanted to see, but I really didn't think we would see snow. Yeah. I did not think so, this is so freaking cool. What are the chances on our last day that we get to see snow, dude? You just gotta get out there and explore. Good things will happen. And oh, if you yes. look down the valley, layers in sunshine, so I don't think the snow is even there. No, no, it won't snow in there, it's just because we're so high. 18 and a half, 18 and a half thousand feet! 
Wow, it's a thousand feet higher than the other day in Tomorui. Luckily we've acclimatized though because I don't feel anything. Yep, we're perfect with oxygen this time around. We bought an oxygen tank just in case though. <laughs> Apparently if you not oh acclimatize, coming down so you much. can only spend 15 minutes up here, they say. So I think we'll be alright. <laughs> I need socks, Chef, I think. Okay, well. These are too, very thick. I'm gonna buy some gloves. Yeah, you need to. Yeah. Need it's really cool. Look at these. Yeah. It's really warm. <sighs> you did it. Jeez. You did it. Come look here, we can see Le. Beautiful view. Oh my goodness, the storm is coming. We better go home. Better go down, it's a storm coming. Oh, shit. Shucks. Literally, like Leah says, the craziest day of my life. <laughs> we did get stuck in a bit of a snowstorm, but we survived. And if we didn't get these socks and those gloves, I don't know if we would have made it like the frostbite would have. The snow got us. was solid, right? It falls on you, but then your body temperature is warm, so it melts it. We were soaking wet. My shoes are freaking soaking wet and then the cold blast and the wind oh everything all the elements oh, couldn't see through the visors Brett nearly bloody made my us ski into the side <coughs> barrier my glasses missed it up the visor missed it up it was <laughs> crazy we are safe and we are sitting in the sun and it's so down warm in it's just sunny just down beautiful here. Just sunny down here. Can't believe what's happening up there. It's crazy. Nuts. By the way, Uncle says that we didn't see yaks. He says that there were zoos. But I still think they're yaks. It's fine. You still saw an animal you've never seen yeah. before. Yeah. Jeez, they are majestic. Oh my gosh. It's one of the best days of my life. What the heck? Our month-long trip in India has sadly come to an end. Our visa has run out and it's just time to leave but we'll be back. Thank you so much for watching our first ever vlogumentary. If you like this format, please leave a comment and let us know. India was one of the most incredible trips we've ever had, seriously. We had some highs and we had some lows, but we wouldn't change it for the world. And if you have ever had India on your list, it's now time to book your trip. We'll see you in the next one.